All right. So this time I wanted to talk about some of the challenges to typing yourself and how it's easy to kind of mistype either yourself or sometimes to mistype other people, especially if you don't have a good opportunity to really, really thoroughly interview them and ask a lot of questions and do the analysis to really break it down. OK, it can be very easy to confuse types, even some types that seem like they shouldn't be confused. OK. In a previous um, interview that Jack did, he was typing someone that uh, it was kind of between SEI and IEI. And those are two types that have a lot of common elements in the middle. There's a lot of stuff they have going on. It's in the same functional position. So they can outwardly present a lot like each other. So it's very easy to mistype them. In MBTI world, that's a uh, common mistyping of ISFJ versus an INFJ. Okay, there's a lot of how they behave externally that makes them seem the same. Okay, but there are other types that can have the same problem. Today, as kind of an example and one that's personal to me, um, I'm going to use ENTJ or the LIE and the uh, ESFP, the LIE, as an example. What did I just say? No, I didn't. ESFP, which is supposed to be SEE. Excuse me. I got caught in my own train of thought there. Anyway, and kind of demonstrate how they can actually look like one another a bit and get confused one another, even though it sounds on in paper like that should never happen, right? So let me show you what I mean here. Let's talk about it. And I got some juicy stuff. So here is Jack talking to Amy Y. This is not a, an interview thing. This is more like just a discussion between the systems, MBTI and Socionics. I think this is a phenomenal conversation. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Check out both their channels. Okay, I'll link them in there. Um, all right, let's see what happens. Amy Wise, you can see, is typed as an SEE. That's what Jack typed her after a session he did with her, um, which is ESFP. So let's see how this goes. Watch. Oh. I mean, actually, my MBTI type is an INTJ, to be quite honest. An <laughs> INTJ, wow. It's like, so my MBTI type, as in I took the online test, is yeah. an INTJ. And to this day, it's still an INTJ. It's really interesting. So understand the significance of that, that her online MBTI test that she stuck with for quite some time was an INTJ. That's an NI lead. Yet here with Jack, she's typed as an SEE, which is an SE lead. You figure how on earth can that happen? Um, and me being the kind of person I am, I immediately jumped on YouTube and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm an INTJ. And then, um, you I'm know, like people are giving me feedback um, as this common in the middle. community that, you know, you're probably not, um, you should probably look into the functions a bit more. And I did. And then, I do agree with the cognitive functions of an INTJ, but I do consider, okay, you may have either typed yourself upside down or like you're just not an I dominant. Um, and so I did do typing sessions and it seems like I did get ESFP, mm -hmm. but every single time I would read a type description, at least the MBTI version anyway, I would never agree with ESFP. That, you know, I don't think I'm spontaneous. I don't think, well, I mean, Maybe I am compared to most people, but I don't think that I'm this like frail seeking person. And I do think that I understand causality. I do understand what is going to happen if I do this thing or as best as I can. So um, I kind of did look into socionics as well because I agreed more so with their type descriptions. And I reached out to you for a typing session. And I don't know what it is, but the SEE sounds a lot more relatable than the ESFP and MBTI. And I can't quite put my finger on what exactly it is, mm. but yeah. So I think it's well, I, 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 let me, just before he goes into that. So again, wow, from an NI lead to an SE Dom. Um, and she makes a great point that, okay, she got typed ESFP a few times, but as she reads profile, she's just not quite agreeing with the profile. And a lot of it does have to do with how profiles are written. And that's that's a big problem. There's a lot of times where there's a profile done, but the profile just isn't quite that great. There's aspects of it where you're like, God, not really, not no. 
uh, maybe I'm not this type because this profile just doesn't seem to work. Okay. And a lot of times, you know what, that's just the subjectivity of any particular profile, whoever wrote it, what was that person's state of mind or they, do they have a certain bias, which is inevitable, by the way, whoever writes a, a profile, they're a certain type and they have certain experiences. And so they're going to have their own views and they're going to like certain types and not like certain types. They're going to have a better understanding of some types and a not so good understanding. For everybody who comes out of um, MBTI world, which is damn near everybody, um, you're going to think of ESFPs as, yeah, these fun party girls that just want to have a good time and that's about it and are basically brain dead. And you know what? In the socionics world, it's better, but not by much. There's still this residual kind of vibe of ESFPs kind of looking like party people or just morons, that they're just somehow brain dead that they they're ti polar and they don't they don't have the thinking function strong enough and they're too into people and so they're kind of stupid there's still a residual aspect of that that remains that kind of needs to be dealt with okay it's enough talking for me let's get back to this i would find it's a very unusual result to get intj even with an, with an sce result yeah but the reason why is <clears throat> those tests don't look at cognitive functions the official no. test is just about the dichotomy. So you have to have got an introvert, intuitive, thinking, and judging. Right. So that, that is an interesting thing to, to, to come out. But I think there's a, what I think people who tend to be typed as INTJ tend to have in common is this more sort of quite more serious mindset, more, okay, how do we solve the actual problem? that's got, got caught up in sort of flowery language or just making sure people are happy, but it's actually fixed the issue in front of us. Right. Uh, that is a set of values, which I think is shared by types of all kinds of strengths and capabilities. Mm -hmm. Gamma types, first and foremost. And a lot of the LSIs as well in the beta quadra also get INTJ, I think, because they're similar-ish in yep. their strengths um, and how they're portrayed. But yeah, it's... <laughs> I do find that very interesting. And it could be that a mixture of things going on here. I think it's quite normal to expect an SCE to get a thinking result rather yeah. than a thinking result because I think SEs are pretty tough minded rather than your typical warm hearted description. You know, they're, they're, they are perfectly fine in those environments of, of war just as much as, as peace. Um, and yeah, they can be direct. They can confront people. They they uh they find it quite natural to do that. Um, what they <laughs> the end side, I think for an SCE, they're less likely to be not. They're not going to be confident in the strategic aspect. Right. They're going to be confident in the tactical aspect. How do I fix this right here? How do I learn the information I need to triumph here, rather mm -hmm. than all the way down there, which is far more murky and unclear. But that doesn't mean that they're not strategically, um, <clears throat> it doesn't mean they don't appreciate strategic intelligence. They want right. to be able to see how things are going on right now. They don't, they're, they're not going to be he hedonists so much. They don't exist right. as, as pleasure in the here and now. That's more alpha land. So it's yeah. an interesting thing. And I think it's why people struggle with characters such as Julius Caesar, or even Genghis Khan, <laughs> both people who I think would be in SCEs but very much military figures yeah, would be yeah. typed ENTJ because it's far more sort of um, bossy, dominating but also um, you know how do they going about achieving big things sorts of people okay let me pause them right there because that was a lot that was great stuff so um, first off that I really like it, I, I subscribe to this idea that any type can look like another type that are all part of the same quadro. Let me rephrase that. If you are someone of alpha quadra, you can briefly probably be confused for another type within alpha quadra. The same could be said of beta. If you are a beta type and you are, you could be confused for another beta and gamma and delta, et cetera. Why? because you all value the same things. You're all kind of pushing for the same 
overall things in life in general. So because of that, depending on your life experience, depending on uh, um, career and other things you've been doing for a long time, depending on the situation that you somebody sees you, they might look at you and confuse you for another type within that quadra, right? Very easy to, to have happen. Very easy for a lot of lazy typing sessions to or drive-by typings uh, where that happens. You get confused for another type within, such as INTJ or an ENTJ with an ESFP. You know, again, for a lot of people, they would think that's crazy. How do you make that that comparison? How do you make that mistake? Well, you can. Um, clearly, as Jack made just now, he thinks that Julius Caesar is an ESFP, an SEE. He thought he just mentioned Genghis Khan, which I've seen the Julius Caesar arguments. I think that's a very good argument for him being an ESFP. So I'm with that one. Genghis Khan is kind of a new one, but I probably he's probably right on that one, actually. So. And those are two people that are not nice. They're not fun people. They're also not idiots. Two individuals who are known for their brilliance, their military brilliance, building entire empires, playing political games and all kinds of stuff. Very savvy people who obviously have gone down in history as some of the most important memorable figures. And those are ESFPs, apparently. There were not ENTJs. But they get confused for ENTJs because of how competent, how effective they were um, at doing things, how knowledgeable they could be on various things. Right. So very important stuff to bring up. Um, again, I think that this quadrant, particular gamma, is probably one of the more mysterious quadras because I think that there's a lot of differences between th how these types are compared to MBTI. I think there's huge difference. And um, I think it's a it's a quadra that because it's also very individualistic, they keep to themselves a lot and they're kind of out of sight. Um, they're not as well flushed out, I think, as some of the other types and other quadras that are very well known, very prominent. We see them a lot. We talk to them a lot, et cetera. Um, SEEs, for example, I, I don't think there's really that many of them who have like YouTube channels and so on that we get to see a lot it, that are a part of typology. That is, there's a lot of them who have channels, but they're doing other things like makeup and uh, modeling or whatever workout, whatever they're doing, but not necessarily part of typology. There's very few of them. Uh, Amy Wise, one of them, go check out her channel uh, and get a, get a sense of her. And by the way, then there's gender to keep in mind too, right? What's an ESFP male versus an ESFP female. A lot of times we tend to think of ESFPs as this female personality that we get in our mind. That's what that's the image that comes up, right? But gender makes a huge difference. Um, Amy Y, obviously female, obviously not going around trying to conquer the known world with cavalry, <laughs> right? So gender makes a big difference here. Um, Let's go into a little more of the uh, learning side as well on this. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. Come over here. Jack, I'm going to cover you up for a moment. If you don't mind. Boop. All right. So here's a little drawing I made. We'll have the card looking all miserable over here. So here's an example. So here's the LIE, ENTJ compared to the SEE, the ESFP, okay? This is the structure. This is classic socionics model A stuff, okay? This is not model G or any of that, okay? They restructure this differently. So here, ENTJ, these are the elements, okay? TE and NI, SIFE, SEFI, okay, you get it, right? Ego, super ego, super id, id. Hopefully I got those right. I hate this part, but we have to get the structure, so whatever. So the ego, the TE and NI, this is what your ENTJ is great at, right? Over here, SEFI for ESFP, that's what they're great at, okay? Other stuff being pushed, okay? This is the bad stuff. Other stuff they're pretty good at, and it shows SEFI for the ENTJ, TE and NI for the ESFP. Now, down here, I wrote the names of the particular spot, the location, 
Okay, it's not the element. These are elements. T E N I S I. Those are elements. The name of the spot, the position, th that is the function, is right here. Okay, dominant. Here's the dominant T E. Creative would be N I. Vulnerable is the S I. Role is the F E. Mobilizing is S E. Suggestive is F I. Ignoring T I and demonstrative N E. Okay, that's the N T J. Now here's the S F P version. Same thing applies, okay? Dominant SE, creative FI, vulnerable STI. Okay, you get the point. So notice certain things between these two types. We've already mentioned their gamma, so they have the same overall values, a certain seriousness, they, they, uh, a certain serious focus on people, individuality that they care for, high achievement is things that they care for, okay? They all share that. So they're all going to show that. They're going to appear that way. Okay. But now on terms of the elements, notice that here for the ENTJ, you have TE and SE. This is a dominant. And then the mobilizing. These are bold, very bold, meaning bold, meaning that they're noticeable. They're going to stand out. You're going to see them. They're really going to show them to people. So it's going to be pretty damn obvious, even to a casual person, that you're seeing those uh, elements popping out at you. Okay. Now, ESFP, notice SE and TE. It's the exact same. It's just reversed. So that's kind of a bit of a problem, right? Casually, when you're looking at them or just dealing with them in general, you're going to see SE and TE in both of them. You're going to see a lot of it. The question now is going to become which one is actually the dominant one and which one is the mobilizing one that they're just kind of showing it off in the moment now because they're comfortable or they're peacocking it a little bit or whatever, right? Which one is it? Which is the one that's always really turned on that they actually are very good at and strong at all the time and have always had? Versus which is the one that they kind of developed it more and they showcase it more as time goes on. That's the mobilizing one. Okay. Difficult to see. Also notice role and demonstrative. Again, bold. ESFP, you have NE and you have FE. Okay. Then over here, uh-oh, FE and NE. Again, they're playing with the exact same elements so both these two types, which are known as activator types, both of the extroverted gamma types are all boldly demonstrating, they're all boldly showing you the exact same elements. It's all slapping you in the face how obvious they're playing with those elements. But the problem is figuring out which one is actually the dominant one, which one is the mobilizing one, which one is really the demonstrative so they're good at it but not valued okay demonstrative demonstrative and which is the one that you know they're kind of all right they sort of you know enough to so kind of maybe get by but they they really don't enjoy playing with it the role function you can see how tricky this can get and you can see that depending on the person and what their background is their personal life what was their family life like? Uh, what career and specialty have they chosen to go into? What circumstances popped up? Cultural background, are, are they, what country do they come from? What is, you know, et cetera. When you start factoring all that in, it can get very tricky and you can start mixing up one for the other, especially when you start going on certain stereotypes like, well, Julius Caesar, an emperor who's so accomplished, well, he can only be an ENTJ. That could not possibly be an ESFP, right? Now, in MBTI world, they define these elements differently. TE is defined differently. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes into TE in MBTI world. Okay, there's a whole lot of stuff that they do to define SE. So the definitions of these elements change. So that's MBTI world. So understand that they might look at Julius Caesar as an ENTJ. Fine. But in socionics land, that changes, okay? Socionics, now we start seeing a lot of great leaders, world conquerors, 
very accomplished people, serious people, okay? Not just celebrities, not just tap dancers, not just people who do fun try haul Amazon lingerie videos, okay? But people who are major serious players in life and they can be ESFPs. Uh, Mark Cuban, I have him on one of my videos, big time billionaire businessman. To me, he's S he's SEE, ESFP all the way. I have a video demonstrating that, show you that as well. And he's a big time, serious minded businessman. If you watch him on Shark Tank and other things, he's sitting there, very serious, looking like Darth Vader, giving very blunt, very aggressive kind of questions all about the details, the facts of how the business works. How does it work? What is your thing working? That's it. How does it work? Show me this and that. All right. It's not soft. It's not party. It's not, it's not any of that. Okay. Depending on when you see him, if you only see him on the show like Shark Tank or see him as a billionaire, you think he's an ENTJ. Or some people think he's an INTJ. And by the INTJ, I mean ILI with NI lead. So it's actually an INTP in socionics. Okay. You see how they start kind of looking like each other a little bit, depending on when you catch them. Now, every now and again, you are going to see some people that are ridiculously obvious. You're going to see some SEE ESFP that is kind of fitting the, the stereotype of being very, very social, um, only interested in social things and dealing with people and partying and, uh, Again, the Amazon try-on of, of lingerie videos, okay? You're going to see those types. And then you're going to see some ENTJs that look horrible in social situations. They're boring. They're dull. They just know a lot of information, facts. You're going to get some that are really obvious, but you're going to get some that are not so obvious, like Mark Cuban, okay? So this is an example of how it can be difficult to sometimes gets people's types right and it, you have to be very thorough to really lock it down sometimes uh, and also part of the reason why if you're self-typing you can get confused you can even confuse yourself you can look at a profile and read it and kind of go i don't know if i agree with this profile i think maybe that other profile there and you sort of talk yourself into it okay very easy to have to to happen so if that's you don't be bothered by that. I'm one of those people myself. I, I've looked at multiple profiles and, and it's like, mm. so it happens. Okay. Um, again, this is for ENTJs and ESFPs that I focused on for the example. And this is one that's relevant to me personally, but you can do the same thing. I could demonstrate this exact same issue going on in every single quadra. And this isn't even showing you the quasi-identical types. Okay, types that, that are very similar. ENTJ will look very similar to an ENTP. They're playing with a lot of the same functions. It's just the values are different. They're prioritizing which, which uh, I said functions, elements. Uh, they're just prioritizing which elements they actually value and care about. Here you have TE in a dominant position with NE in a demonstrative position. So they're going to, ENTJ is going to show you a lot of NE. ENTPs have NE in the dominant position with TE in the demonstrative position. So your ENTP is going to show you good TE. The question is, which one is being, which element is being valid and which one's not, All right? So that's another example. So I'll save that one for a different video. Um, I think I got my point across pretty well so far with this. So kind of stick with that. But uh, I strongly encourage checking out the rest of this particular video. I think this this is a phenomenal video. Uh, Jack and Amy go into it for a long, long time about a lot of stuff. And he's kind of demonstrating why someone like Amy looks can look a lot like an ENTJ or just an NTJ overall, why that would happen. So I'll leave the links on here. Check it out, like, and subscribe. And um, 
leave your comments on this one. I'd be very fascinated to see what people have to say about this. All right. So uh, until the next one.